Today we're going to be doing a comprehensive breakdown of a modern winter survival kit for your vehicle. This kit will include some of the most up-to-date winter survival tools and strategies, but a lot of this gear is going to be useful no matter what the season. So let's get to it. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're gonna break down my winter vehicle survival kit. Now, this is not a general multi-purpose use winter survival kit. I've already done videos on those. They're a couple years old. So maybe if you guys want me to do an updated winter bug out bag video, that's certainly something I could do because the gear has definitely changed. So this is built with the understanding that you have a vehicle that you can use as a shelter or that you're trying to evade from or you're trying to fix and get moving so that you can keep going. And this is only one part of the kit. So this is the part of the kit that rolls up. This is the smaller stuff, okay? And I have a bunch of other stuff down here that I'm gonna show you which is too big to put in here. This rolls up and I store it in the truck bed. And then I also have some other stuff that I have a cross bin in my truck bed that I can store in there that's always in there. I forgot to turn the heat on in here before coming out so I have to don the winter jacket which is quite appropriate for the video I guess. So with respect to designing a winter vehicle survival kit it's going to be based around your needs obviously right. So if you're somebody who lives in the inner city there's probably a lot of this stuff you're not going to need because really the, the biggest thing you're going to be concerned about is getting a tow truck or maybe getting yourself unstuck. You know, there's, that snow can really accumulate in the inner city because it's hard for them to remove. So it, it kind of tends to get removed last in some places. So getting yourself unstuck or getting, you know, a set of booster cables on there is obviously going to be of primary importance. But if you commute long distances like to rural areas, and you know you find yourself in the middle of a snowstorm where everybody is in need of help and 911 is being overloaded with phone calls uh, you could be waiting out there for a significant amount of time if you're even able to get cell service but if you are planning on going into for a backcountry trip in particular then you probably need to double if not triple up on some of these items that I'm going to demonstrate today. Now before we do the deep dive into the roll, let's just talk about some basic things for your consideration. Okay, you're going to want a way to boil water. This is it's a jet boil system. Okay, it's really easy. It works with butane. I don't have the canister offhand. This is just good for boiling snow. Okay, it's going to work very quickly. If you're really cold and you need water, you don't want to waste a whole lot of energy getting that water and it can take a while to, to melt enough snow for a decent amount of water. Remember that 10 liters of snow is only one liter of water and it can take a while to melt 10 liters of snow. Not really a while but it takes energy, it's work. Now if you want you can, can carry a bigger container than this but then that's going to start digging into your space. This is just a little candle lantern as well. Other things you're going to want to consider, I think this is probably one of the most important things. It's just a little mini portable heater, okay? I keep the uh, instructions and emergency stuff on there and that works with propane and there's also a base that you use with it. This is a Mr. Heater, it's a very reputable brand. When it comes to a propane heater, I want a reputable brand. I want something that's not going to explode or accidentally get knocked over and cause a problem for me, right? So this is something that works pretty well. It will heat a small space. You can use that to heat inside your vehicle. Of course, you got to take care because it is very hot and you should definitely crack a window because you don't want any carbon monoxide poisoning. This is just a fire extinguisher. You should probably always have that in your car. It's not really winter specific. A tow rope. This is absolutely essential, especially if you're somebody who has a vehicle that doesn't have four wheel drive because somebody who does might come across you and might want to help you get unstuck but they can't because they don't have a tow rope. So having the tools that they might need to assist you will be very useful. This is an ice fishing shovel. It really doesn't matter what kind of shovel as long as you have a shovel. It folds up and it doesn't take up a lot of space but any shovel will do and it doesn't need to be a shovel which is going to be extremely rigid 
and you don't have to worry about it breaking so much because you're just lifting snow. You're not, you know, wrenching it in the dirt or something like that. So just something that can flip the snow. This works really well for winter camping, by the way. But I also just ordered these Max Trax things for my truck, and they also double as shovels as well. Now, I keep these in my car also. I also have a pair of Beaver ones. And I'm gonna be doing a video on the importance of fur. If you find yourself outside in anything below minus 20, that's gonna be a really serious situation really fast. So having something like this to keep you warm for an extended period of time or to quickly warm up your hands, your hands could potentially be the most important thing because they're gonna be what allows you to maneuver a situation, to collect firewood, to make a shelter. You know, I mean, if you're out there in the middle of nowhere and you have to make a shelter and your hands are freezing, you're not gonna be able to do it and you're probably gonna die. So having a way to warm up your hands at the bare minimum, and these things are, I mean, I, my hands are just hot just putting them in there right now, but these are built for, you know, the most extreme forms of terrain. I'll post a link where you can get something like that. This is something which is very rare and will last a lifetime. I'm gonna be talking about the importance of furs, not for the purpose of vanity and, you know, trying to uh, be a status symbol or something like that, but actually for function. We're all about function over fashion on this channel. And this jacket might look fashionable, but I assure you I didn't buy it for that reason. I bought it because it's functional and it will keep me alive if the temperature goes below minus 40. Okay, now I think I'm actually a little warmed up now. So we can, nah, it's still too cold in here. I'll leave it on. Okay, what should we do? Let's start over here. Okay, so we, over here we got some lighting. Okay, just a standard flashlight. Any flashlight will work. Here I have, uh, this is in my vehicle all the time. This is a guardian angel light, okay? This is a light which is made for first responders. You can get them in different color configurations. You can get them in, you know, for police, for blue, uh, white, and red. And you can get them in white and green, white, blue, yellow, all different types of color configurations. This is the white, green, red. It's one that I'm legally allowed to use. You don't wanna be, you don't wanna have police lights and uh, be charged with impersonating an officer. Definitely not a good idea. But this light has all sorts of functionality to it. I've done videos on it before, so you can check that out, Guardian Angel. You can run this thing over with a car and it won't break. They're built to take abuse. They have a really strong magnet on the back so you can attach this to pretty much everything. There's all kinds of mounts that you can get for it and it's extremely visible from a long ways away. I also have a Backtrax GPS. This is an old school GPS, but it works really well. And you know, the battery power is gonna be a little limited. I'm sure there's technology which is far superior to this now, actually even on my smartwatch, I'm sure there is. But I, this is very easy to use. You can just put input waypoints. So if I had to travel and it's a whiteout situation, I can't see anything, but you know, I can see this and at least I know where I'm going. It's easy to uh, lose sight of where you are in the snow, if not for your footprints. So something to consider. Now these are something that's new and improved. I've demonstrated these on the channel before, but this version is far better. Now I'm gonna overlay some footage of me using these. They're lighter than they used to be. These are the Catula Micro Spikes. So these are like tire chains for your feet. These aren't your run of the mill cleats that you'll find at the local hardware store. These are, I can't remember where they're made. They're made somewhere in Europe anyways, but they're really built tough and rugged and one pair will last you damn near forever. And uh, they fit really nice and snug. And these will give you the ultimate traction. Like if you ever tried pushing somebody out, you know, you're trying to push them out, they're stuck and you can't get any grip. Uh, these will give you like Superman grip. Like if somebody, if you got in a fight with somebody in the winter time on the ice and you had these on, you would have a huge advantage because for one, you wouldn't fall down, but you'd also have spiked feet. Can't go wrong with spiked feet in a shit hits the fan situation. These are some serious spikes, right? You might think that, well, you know, if I'm walking on a hard surface with those, those are gonna bend. No, this steel is, Super hard steel. I don't know what kind of steel they use, 
but you can't bend this steel. That's how hard it is. This is made with exceptional quality. I think they're around, they run between 60 to 100 bucks, depending on what kind you get, but well worth it. It's one of those things, you know, you buy it once, you cry once. You don't have to buy a new pair every season. This is something which is, they've got the weight probably half of what it used to be, which is very impressive and it fits in a very small package. I have a emergency radio there, which is crank powered. The great thing about crank power, kinetic energy, is that it's going to, it's going to force you to get warm. Okay, you're going to be burning calories through thermogenesis anyways, just sitting there shivering. So why not do this, right? Why not do that? Generate some energy. And in the process, you'll get the weather band so you'll know what the weather is going to be, what the forecast is going to be, and uh, you know just your local radio. This is not going to allow you to communicate. For that, you're going to need an actual communication device. Hopefully you have your smartphone and you're in cell phone range. Always keep some extra power. We're going to get to that. There's also a Sharpie marker in there and a Maxpedition right in the rain. Notepad just in case you have to leave your vehicle and you need to leave a note for a rescue team, something like that. So up in here, we have, this is probably, you know, a lot of people pack those little tiny emergency blankets. The problem with those is that not only are they very thin and they don't provide a whole lot of uh, thermal reflectivity, they also are prone to tearing. And so something like this, which is just a little bit more heavy duty, and th these only cost like 15, 20 bucks. It's just a heavier duty, they call it a sport utility blanket. Basically, it's a, a heavy duty mylar blanket. It's kind of like a tarp, same tarpy type material that you're probably accustomed to with a mylar reflective uh, layer on the back. So that's gonna reflect your body heat so you can build a shelter out of this. Uh, that in conjunction with a fire will keep you fairly reasonably warm and uh, provide you a little bit of comfort anyways, or you could just wrap it around yourself in your vehicle to conserve heat. In that same vein, we also have some other heating tools here. So here we have a Zippo lighter fluid, and this is a Zippo hand warmer. I should probably have two in here. I'm gonna be getting some Zippo uh, hand warmers in the store pretty soon, so I'll be able to get one. Zippo hand warmer is really, really good. Way better than these things which is why I only have one in there and it's an old one. I don't even know if it'll work anymore. But these things will last up to 12 hours and they provide some serious heat. Actually, I just realized that I don't have the case for it. If you don't have the case for it, then um, it can become kind of too hot to handle. But I do have, you know, some leather gloves. So, you know, I could use it in that respect. But yeah, it gets, it gets pretty hot. Not so hot that it's not useful or it's unbearable but it's way better than these. If these get wet or something, you know, they're damn near useless. This 12 hours minimum of heat. I've had them burn up to 24 hours. So they definitely work really well. That's enough lighter fluid to last this for a long, long time. A lighter, a survival poncho, which is also reflective. So this will be reflective just like this material, only it's in a poncho form. So you could put that under or over your clothing. You probably want to put it over your clothing because if you get too hot and you start to sweat, then that's not good either. At least if it's over your clothing and hopefully you're wearing some sort of wool base layer. Look, you should always, if you are going out into the wilderness, I mean, this should go without saying, you should probably try to make sure that you have a warm set of clothes or that you're wearing something that if you were to get stranded on the side of the road, that you know you would feel comfortable being able to survive in that. So I would say just make sure that you're carrying the right apparel in case something happens. You know your car might be running fine right now, but it may not be. So in here I have uh, just a survival kit. This was actually sent to me by Drop Ford Survival. He has a YouTube channel on here as well. He hasn't been uploading lately, so maybe this is motivation for him to do that. He put together him and his a friend of his put together some really cool survival kits, and they're really well made, well designed. That guy really knows his stuff, so I hope Chris uh, comes back on YouTube. A Lansky sharpener for some of the, the steel that I got. 
I also have a methanol, that methanol gel uh, combustible fuel in here. It's good because if for whatever reason, your propane fails or something like that. You know, you have that, then you have candles as well and some other fire starting tools to keep yourself warm. I also have as a last ditch, if I did have to use natural materials, I could use this firebox stove to concentrate the heat of uh, burning wood into a way I could use it to actually boil water. And for that, I would use the Nalgene stainless steel bottle, but it's up to you. I mean, you could, anything stainless steel, a, a pot, anything like that will work just fine for boiling water. But you don't wanna be eating snow because that's gonna lower your body temperature and it takes energy to melt the snow. So unless you have an unlimited supply of food, you probably don't wanna do that. Now up next is some road flares. I don't have the bear flare in here. I would have the bear flare if this was a summer survival kit because the bear flare is just a great multi-purpose tool. But these are road flares. They're not nearly as bright, but they last a lot longer. You can also use them to light an emergency fire if you really need to get somebody. What was that movie? They did that in um, The Edge with uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins. You know, the guy hurts himself and they have to get a fire going right away. And <clears throat> probably not the smartest thing to do in that situation because, well, the guy shouldn't have cut himself in the first place. Anyways, you know, dumb things people do in movies. But they decided to burn a flare because they needed to get the guy warm really fast, even though they probably could have took the time to get, get it going with a match. Anyways, use them sparingly, but their primary use is for signaling and alerting other cars who are coming, if you're in a blizzard, you watch my blizzard video, you couldn't see 30 yards ahead in that blizzard. So something like this would provide you a hope, a chance of being seen if the battery in your vehicle was dead and your hazard lights weren't working. Now, this is a uh, vehicle booster. This is the uh, NOCO Boost. I've had other ones and they actually work quite well. I've used them before, these things do work. They really do work. This one is 1500 amps. And I can't remember the actual milliamp hours that are in this 35 watt hours lithium ion. So that's not bad. Um, that's enough to charge your cell phone several times. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Qualcomm quick charge, but it does have 2.1 amp charging. So it's gonna charge it faster than the old school anyways, but still not as fast as some of us might uh, come to appreciate. But what I like about this brand is that it's reliable, it's built really tough, and it's guaranteed to only put the amount of charge that your battery is gonna handle. So it's not gonna damage your battery like some of these might. And I've used these before and they work in the moment, but I'm pretty sure the cheap Chinese one that I used was damaging my battery in the process and making it worse because either it was uh, providing it with too much electricity or maybe not enough, I'm not really entirely sure. Lithium is good in the winter time for holding its charge. However, bear in mind, if you leave this in your vehicle for a month of winter and it's really cold out, the battery is gonna drain. So you need to be recharging these and replenishing it on a regular basis. Every you know other week or so, just check it to make sure there's enough charge in there. Now I don't have a solar system in here to charge that because the idea would be that this would be charged. So up next, I have the tack bar. And I'm not even sure if they still sell these anymore. But this is one of those situations where something like this would be the most ideal in a winter situation. For the primary reason that you may not have the means to cook food, now, that, it's debatable, right? Because obviously there's snow everywhere and you have a heat source. I have, you know, a, a thing to cook it in. So you can make the argument that why not just put some mountain house in there instead, have a nice warm meal. The good thing about this though, is that there's no preparation required. It's simply just a brick of energy that you can eat anywhere. You can eat it on the move. And I think when you're that cold, not I think, I know, when you're that cold, eating anything is, it, you can just, it's like feeding a furnace, okay? Because you burn so much energy 
when you're out there in the cold for long periods of time. Like I can literally eat 10,000 calories on a busy day in the bush on a cold day and lose weight. That's how much energy you burn. I think it's something like, oh, I can't remember what it is, but it's, it's like a thousand calories an hour if your body is really trying to keep itself warm. So you're burning a lot of energy. Also have an ice cream sandwich, astronaut ice cream sandwich and some survival tabs. So, you know, MREs are out of the question because an MRE is gonna freeze. Then what are you gonna do? Um, like I said, freeze dried food requires hot water. If you don't have hot water, you're SOL. Now, besides the lithium booster, we also have standard jumper cables. Okay, I think that's all that's in there. Because, you know, this might for whatever be out of commission, so you have this as a backup. May seem a little bit excessive, but it is what it is. Now, if you don't have bumper, jump, bumper, jumper cables, there's other ways to boost a vehicle. Connecting different pieces of metal together to get a charge from one battery to another. So just because you don't have jumper cables doesn't mean you're totally SOL. You can improvise in the situation, but be warned, you could get zapped. So disclaimer, disclaimer, right? Okay, what else we got here? We have some triangular reflector. Now your lights, I think most lights have this reflective material in them anyways, but this is just an extra, you know, way to signal people of your presence, right? Let's put that on the side of the road, stand it up by the tire. I also have a winter survival handbook. If anything, it's gonna be good reading. Probably most of this stuff I already know to be honest, but you know, there's a few things in there which are a bit more uh, particular that it just, it'd be good to have something like this as a point of reference anyways. These books are really good. The books by Tim McQuelch, excellent books. Also have some ice picks, okay? So these, how they work is when you, when you stamp, stab them into something, there's gonna be a little spike that comes out. So that way, if you see that there, if you fall through the ice, or something, or you, you find yourself on a slippery slope or whatever, you can use these kind of like you would a, a climbing ax or something like that. So between this and your Catula micro spikes, you should have no problem getting a grip. So if you fall in the ice, if you have to cross a lake or whatever the case might be, you know, you put these around your neck, you can put them through your jacket, or you could just keep them around your neck, but you wanna make sure that you're not gonna lose them if you do fall through the ice. So they need to be securely on your person and ready to access like in a moment's notice, okay? So something like that, you know, might be useful to have on deck just in case. This guy needs no mention on this channel, no mention at all. The one and only Silky Nada. I tell you man, this, this is way better than your run of the mill hatchet because there's just a way bigger surface area. This is like a machete for the boreal forest, is what it is. Everybody needs a Silky Nada in their, in their anything survival kit. Doesn't have to be winter, summer, spring, whatever. What else we got in here? So we got a folding Silky Excel. In terms of folders, this is my favorite because it's got that wild curve, which is gonna allow for really quick processing of firewood and it's very ergonomic. It blends the benefits of a folding saw and a, a pistol grip saw, I should say, because you can see the curve there. A lot of these folding saws, they're flat, right? So they don't conform to your hand and then they, that makes them a little harder to use. That's why I prefer this over the Silky Big Boy 2000 any day of the week. You will be able to use this a lot longer without getting tendonitis or something than you would that uh, Silky Big Boy 2000. Still a great saw and the Big Boy probably cuts bigger wood, but this for long-term use, strongly recommend. I should say though, in my truck, I also have a Katana Boy 650 and I think I have the 500 in there as well. So really, do I even need that? Probably not. And in terms of knives, this is the American Lawman. It's just a really durable folder. 
but it's also got a nice thin form factor. So it's not really bulky, it's not super heavy, but it's incredibly strong, really, really strong. I should probably have my um, Survival Lily Apple 1S in there. That's a new one that she just released. Oh, I should mention, we are actually selling Survival Lily's knives now at CanadianPreparedness.com. But I like this because it's lightweight, but it's incredibly, incredibly strong. I'm not sure if they market it to police. That's why they call it the American Lawman, but it's cold steel. And yeah, just a really, really strong knife. S35V and steel. Made in Taiwan, but whatever. Everything's made in Taiwan nowadays or somewhere over there. Some other things you might want to consider are lock lube and de-icer. You may also want to consider some trekking poles, although walking sticks will probably suffice. But in a pinch, you know, trekking poles would be helpful for some people, especially if you have to wear snowshoes. They can be particularly useful depending on where you are. If the snowpack isn't that good, you might need snowshoes a firearm for self-defense, things of that nature. Now, when we're talking about this stuff, we're getting into, you know, you're going for a three or four hour drive into the wilderness and it's minus 30 out. And if you get stranded, you're pretty much SOL for help for several hours, if not days. So most situations aren't gonna be that. Most situations are gonna be your car breaks down and you phone a tow truck, like 99% of situations. But as survivalists and preppers, we have the luxury of prepping for that 1% that might happen. And because like people like myself, we go deep into the bush in these conditions frequently, you know, there's a much higher risk of it happening than the average run of the mill city slicker. Again, if there was an emergency and you had to bug out and it was winter time, having all this stuff in there beforehand is still gonna be a big fail safe. Even if you do load up the car last minute, at least you know you have all the basics covered, enough to carry you through for a short period of time. If you really wanted to go all out, you'd have a wood stove in there, you'd have all of your standard camping equipment, your hot tent, you know, uh, blankets, wool blanket, things of that nature, cast iron frying pan, you know, all, all of the old backcountry stuff, right? But we don't wanna go overboard. This is a winter vehicle survival kit. So we don't wanna bring the kitchen sink, although that might be useful out there. We don't wanna do that. Now that reminds me that I've been considering doing some GUN videos. If you guys would like me to do uh, different types of guns, I'm thinking like a entry level video for people who don't know anything about firearms because I'm by no means an expert, but I still think I have the ability to teach kindergarten when it comes to guns. Certainly I'm not a university professor. There's lots of incredibly knowledgeable people online, but I can teach kindergarten, you know, and there's a lot of people now because of all the stuff that's going on, they want that early education on firearms. So maybe I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do a GUN video. I'm going to do it responsibly. I'm gonna do it uh, you know, in a way which is safe and provide all the disclaimers, so hopefully YouTube doesn't come at me for it. But I mean, Demolition Ranch blows up something new every week. Maybe that's what I have to do. I have to do it in a really goofy way and make it really fun and exciting. Maybe then it will pass the test, I don't know. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section below and let me know if you have any ideas for winter survival gear and if you would like me to redo the winter bug out bag video. I would like to do it again. There is a few pieces of kit that I'm gonna be reviewing this winter. Uh, one of them is a really beautiful wood stove that I've wanted for some time now, and I finally got one. Well, actually, I've sold them at the store for the last year, but I've never bit the bullet and actually got one myself. But amazing wood stove that I'm really looking forward to just sitting there drinking some hot chocolate, you know, listening to the coyotes uh, surround the tent. There's nothing like putting yourself in a situation where you just have enough creature comforts to, to stay alive because everything tastes better. You appreciate the warmth, the fire more. You appreciate the heat more. You appreciate all the things in life just a little bit more when you're just pushed to the edge just a little bit. Anyways, guys, stay tuned for that. Stay safe out there. Things are getting pretty crazy. I hope this video helped take your mind off that kind of stuff. 
for a little bit anyways. I'm sure the next video is probably going to be some more bad news, but it is what it is. I just uh, try to report what I see, what I feel. That's what you get. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe. Remember, the strong survive, prepared thrive. Canadian Prepper O. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. Your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.